Hi, my name is Aaron, and today we're going to take a Northern Electric 500 telephone and convert it from a pulse telephone to a touch tone telephone. I ordered a pulse to tone converter kit from Old Phone Works out of Kingston, Ontario, and I'll include a link in the description. I've already disassembled the phone to a certain extent. I've removed the outer cover by removing the two screws in the bottom, and I've loosened off two of the screws holding the dial in place to make it easier to access the network. This is our network here. All the connections are labeled on the side. We have our C, R, R, F, K, A, all of these labels. As we go through, you'll see why they're so important. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I move the dial, so that comes off nice and easy, and we're going to install our polarity converter. So this basically prevents the phone from being plugged in backwards. If you plug it in and your tip and ring are reversed, this little guy here means we won't fry anything. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to disconnect the wire from the C terminal. That should be a slate brown wire right here. So just pull that off and we're going to connect that to the white terminal on our polarity guard. We're then going to take the white wire and connect it back up right where we disconnected the slate brown wire from on that C terminal. Next, we're gonna locate the slate white wire, which on this phone, the documentation from old phone works says that it's on the RR terminal on the network. But on this one, it's actually on the F terminal. We're gonna remove it from the F terminal and I'm gonna try replacing that connector with the F terminal as I pull off other cables as well. So we're gonna put this white slate wire onto the polarity guard on the green terminal. And take that green wire and put it back here. And look, I've already disconnected a wire. So this is our blue dial wire, which we are going to end up moving, but not yet. So I'm just going to make sure all my wires go back in place nice and neat. And then we're going to do a quick test make sure the phone still works. So I'm gonna power on our tester and I'm gonna check and I now have dial tone on the phone. I'm gonna dial a digit and there we go. The dial digit still works. I could hear my dial tone and I could hear my side tone. So the phone is still in working order at this point. So at this point, the polarity guard is in place and we need to disconnect the dial from the network and install the diode. So I'm going to slide this dial back off. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab this blue wire off of F. Remember that wire I was just telling you about? It's coming off. We're going to take the green wire from the dial to RR. It's also going to come off. And while I'm doing this, we're just going to tighten up our screws to make sure nothing else comes off. So there is our green wire on RR. the white dial wire from GN, which is this guy right here. And 
and the white wire from R, which is this guy right here. Again, making sure that if there are any other terminals connected, we leave them in place. Now we're going to take this diode, this guy here, and connect that between F and RR. So I got my little pliers here. F and R are actually quite close to each other. So if I look at this, I almost have no room to play with here. So I'm just going to twist this around. Just like that. And I'm going to see if I can't set this down the side of the network here. And it looks like I should be able to do that. So we're going to make a couple of twists, turn these into little hooks. These are not the most elegant looking hooks, but they should do the trick. We're going to loosen off our F and RR. Now in this case, our polarity guard is probably best moved out of the way while we install this. We're just going to slide that in place on the F terminal and the RR terminal. I guess it's probably easiest to do one at a time. So there's our RR. And then the F terminal, which we know we need our polarity wire on. So we're going to get both of those at the same time. And of course, in doing that, I knocked off the first one. So we're just going to pause this for a minute while I fight with this. When I come back, I should have my diode connected. Okay, it was a bit of a fight, but I did end up getting that diode in place. I'll show you here. You can see the diode between RR and F. And that is the green wire going to my polarity guard. Before I finish here, I will tighten up all these connections and make them look pretty. But for now, it's good enough. So next step is to install the Rotatone module. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to take red and that's going to go on to RR. This uh, certainly is a very busy portion of the network with that diode on it. Just slide this in. We're going to try and get it underneath the diode. So that is a bulky connector. There we go. We'll tighten that back down. Next off, we're going to take the blue. And we're going to attach that to the C on the network. 
This is the connector with the light from our polarity guard. Third, we're gonna take the orange and we're gonna connect that to the green wire on the dial. So this is where it gets a little tricky because if you look at these wires, we now have two spades. So I'm just gonna grab a little bit of electrical tape to hold those together. So I'm back with my electrical tape we're just gonna tape those two little pieces together so they do not fall apart. So as I mentioned, that was the orange from the rototone and the green from the dial. I wanna keep that wound as tightly as we can. Next, we're going to get the white from the rototone, and we're going to attach that to the blue from the dial and one of the white cables from the dial. So I'm gonna just sort of untangle these a little bit better. We're gonna do the same thing again small piece of electrical tape, and in this case, three wires. So we've got the blue from the dial, one of the two white wires from the dial that we disconnected. I don't believe it makes a difference which one we use. And the white wire from the rototone. So for simplicity's sake, I'm going to leave the tape on the roll and cut it after I'm done. There's my blue. There's my white. And there's my rototone white. Nice and tight, we'll wrap them up. Give that a little trim. And then we have one more wire to connect. The last thing we have should be our brown wire. And that is going to go to the other white wire from the dial. So just pull that out. And as before, a little bit of tape. If you're looking for something more permanent, you can always solder these together as well. Uh, I'm not great at soldering. I'll be the first to admit it. So I tend not to do it if I don't have to. But if you are handy like that and you want to solder it, by all means. When I started this project, I selected the phones that I specifically knew I would not have to do any soldering with. Some of the older models, you will have to cut and re-solder some of the wires because the terminals will be soldered in place and not these nice connectors. So at this point, everything should work. Okay, so I did have to make one minor tweak uh, in my testing. I moved the red rototone connector to the F connector on the network. That is not what it said to do in the instructions, but I found that's what worked for me. It uh, logically should work since both of those are connected by the diode, but uh, I would always advise trying to follow the directions first and then trying to see what works afterwards. So again, Normally you would connect that red wire to the correct RR lead. 
I have mine connected to F. It seems to be working. So we'll demonstrate that it works. In order for this to happen, the phone has to be on hook when dial tone starts. So to confirm that, we'll just set it to ring. The phone does ring. I now have dial tone on the telephone. If I dial my digits, of course now I look like an idiot because the dial digits aren't dialing. So now when I dial my digits, I see the digits appear on the screen. There's a five, we'll do all the way to zero. And we'll just come back around the dial, making sure each digit pulses end to a tone as expected. As I, of course, rack the phone here. Oh, I didn't quite get it all the way on the five there. And because it wasn't an appropriate number of cycles, it didn't actually send a digit. So there we have it. All 10 digits work. Each one of them sent tones. I could hear the tones on the handset. If you had a handset like this, you could hear it too. Anyhow, we'll put the phone back together, being careful to put everything in a place where it won't be buffeted around as you go. So again, we're just gonna pull the dial up and we're gonna take all these connections and tuck them away as best we can. I'm going to slide my rota tone back down my ringer assembly. I've got my dial or my pulse dial here. I'm going to fully remove this screw for the purposes of reassembling things. Or not quite fully, but sufficiently remove it because I'm actually going to clip the polarity guard onto the side here. And I'm hoping this is going to work. Most of the wires should end up underneath the dial. And if I slide that in nicely, I should be able to tighten it up. And my polarity guard should stay in place. And just to be on the safe side, I'm going to throw a piece of tape in behind that so that I don't short anything out when I do connect it back up to a line. So we're just gonna loosen this off again. And stick a piece of tape across all those back contacts. And then tighten it back in place. We just don't want anything falling apart. Circuiting. Tuck our wires under there. And as you can see, this is a nice way to keep using that vintage telephone on a phone system that no longer supports the rotary dial. And there you have it, 500 telephone set that will now work on any modern telephone network, including those that only support touch tone telephones.